Let's braise some venison. We have this lovely shoulder of deer, onions, garlic, carrots, mushrooms, elephant heart prunes, and a nice chunk of brown sugar cured, applewood smoked, kuni kuni bacon. We're gonna use some parsley and pineapple sage left over from last year in our Dutch oven. Oven is preheating to 250 degrees. Let's get this thing in a pot. Step one is gonna to be to cook up some of this lovely bacon. And we're gonna use the drippings that render from this bacon as the oil in which we will brown our joint of meat. We don't need too terribly much, just enough to get a good flavor and fat pool. Turn our Dutch oven on to about medium high and we'll let that render. Once the fat starts dripping out of the bacon, I like to turn the heat down pretty close to low and get all of the fat out of this bacon that we can without burning anything. I just move around occasionally. Let it all get nice and evenly brown. Then we'll pull the bacon pieces out and put the big chunk of deer meat in. That ought to do it. So we'll pull all the bacon out, transfer it to this bowl, where basically everything is going to wait for the final braise assembly. If only you could smell this bacon. Okay, there we go. We're going to bring the heat up to about medium. I like so. We want this to be hot enough to get a good caramelization on all the sides of our roast, but I don't want it so hot that we're going to have burn bits in the fat because once that roast comes out, we'll saute all of this good stuff. Also uh, going to use some beef demi-glaze and some red wine, about a cup of that, two cups of the stock. And this is, of course, my own not for human consumption brand beef broth, which says this product is not produced in accordance with any government laws or regulations. Therefore, it must be labeled not for human consumption. It was, however, crafted in, with the greatest care, using the finest ingredients, and processed using best practices. We eat it and love it, but it's up to you, because you're not an idiot, right? We're hot, just a little smoky. We're gonna start with this cut end, and actually I'll salt that up a little bit. Some uh, Himalayan pink salt. Salt all sides of this. About like so. And in we go. And we'll just let that sit there. And when we are pretty sure it's got a nice brown crust on that side, we'll flip it. All our venison browns, we'll go ahead and tear the vegetables. We're going to want fairly large chunks for the sprays, and uh, we'll probably strain these out and use the sauce, reserving, of course, the mushrooms. I might puree the uh, vegetables in with the braising liquid to make a sauce. We'll just have to see how it then looks at the end here. Starting with the onions, just real chunky, about one inch pieces. Putting them down, cutting the thirds. 
probably good there. This is actually a clove of garlic that grew in the garden from some garlic left from last year. So it's basically one big clove. That's kind of nice. Got a little bit of a bruise on that side. We'll take off. And we'll just go ahead and split and slice this. About like so. Onions, these carrots. We'll just go ahead and slice these into fairly thick coins. About three eighths of an inch half of thick coins. How about that? Purple carrot. And then the mushrooms, because I'm going to want to be able to reserve them, I don't want to slice them. They'll essentially disintegrate in this long cook. So we're just going to Cut them in about six, something like that. These are pretty big button mushrooms. About like yay. And I'll probably pull these right at the end, set them aside, puree the sauce and then add them back and we'll essentially have like a mushroom gravy without any flour using all this vegetable matter and our prunes as the thickening agent. So this will end up being gluten free. All right, let's check what's going on over here. I'll show you what it looks like on the bottom side of this roast. That looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and do this side. Okay, that second side is browned off. We'll go ahead and roll it over. So. This freezing technique with game meat is one of the most nutritious things you can do. If you think about a deer out in the forest, it's spending its entire life eating deep-rooted native plants. And so those plants are mining minerals up from the subsoil that are not present in the diet of factory farm concentrated feed operation meat. Because what they're eating is an annual crop of genetically modified grain. So this animal has mineral rich meat and bones and because we have a joint where there is a bone intact, in by slow cooking it over several hours at a low temperature we're going to release all of that collagen and a lot of those minerals out of it. So what we'll end up with is very tender meat and the broth will be full of gelatin, collagen, and that full spectrum of minerals. And so this is great for uh, joint health, skin health, hair health, things like that. Uh, and anti-inflammatory effects as well. So really, eating uh, wild game prepared in this way is one of the better things you can do for yourself. Right on the final side, you can see all that delicious marrow and that bone on top there. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pull this out, put it with the bacon, and then we will add the mushrooms and saute those. They'll pull up a lot of the uh, uh, bacon drippings actually into them. And then we'll pull them out, saute the onions and carrots, and then that will be the last step before we add everything for the braise. We'll go ahead and move our roast over here. Looks pretty good already. That goes there. Mushrooms in. I could add the uh, rest of the vegetables as well, but I don't want to crowd these mushrooms. I want to get a little bit of color on them, similar to if you're making a, uh, a beef bourguignon. Uh, mushrooms 
with our bacon drippings and our venison drippings. Got this on about a medium low heat. And I'm basically just going to let them sit there, get a little color, toss them around. And we'll put them in this bowl with the bacon and the deer meat. Looks like they're these guys. Our mushrooms are about there. They look pretty good. We'll go ahead and put those in our bowl. With the bacon and the deer meat. And as you can see, the mushrooms absorb almost all of that bacon fat, but there's still enough in the bottom of the pan to cook all of our vegetables. And on this, we're basically looking for translucent. We don't want to caramelize this. The garlic will, of course, cook faster than everything else. So we're really going to be watching that. When the garlic just starts to caramelize and you get a little bit of that uh, nutty flavor, then we're going to go ahead and deglaze with the wine, add the stock, the prunes, the herbs, everything in the bowl, some pepper, and probably a little more salt, and then cover it and get it in the oven. All right, we're getting pretty close on this veg. You can see, like this onion here, starting to get translucent. Because this is such a long cook, it's not going to matter all that much. You just want to basically bring out the flavor in these aromatic vegetables. You can see this garlic right here. It's just starting to get a little bit of caramelization on it. We're going to go ahead and call that good. And in goes one cup. Red wine. This one's a juicy box cabernet. So by deglazing, we're releasing any bits of flavor that are stuck on the pan. And that goes like so. We'll add elephant heart plums for a little bit of sweetness. This pineapple sage. Yeah, about like that. And then some parsley. Something like that. Nice dose of herbs, good flavor. gelatin present in that beef stock. The way I make this is I roast beef bones and we take a steer in for processing. I make sure I get all the bones back and then roast those at 425 for a couple of hours and then slow cook them in an electric roasting pan for 24 hours with carrots, onions, celery, red wine, herbs and such. Pulls out all of that good gelatin collagen from the connective tissue. Okay, so we'll actually get this up to a simmer before we add the meat. And we'll go ahead and grind a little pepper in here. Add a little more salt, maybe get this broth a taste, make sure that we're where we want to be. And then we'll put the meat and bacon and mushrooms back in. Nice simmer achieved. I went ahead and put in well, around half a teaspoon of more salt and some ground pepper. What we're going to do, take our lovely roast, bone side down, like so. Then go the mushrooms and the bacon, Not like yay. On goes the lid. This goes into the oven for a 
hours. 